This Judd Apatow Seth Rogen joint, pun intended, is opening with on screen setting text that is both specific and vague. While I appreciate a fake rock as an idea to hide a ladder to a secret underground military facility, some kids would have found and breached this fake rock roughly five weeks after it was installed, no matter how far out the boonies it is. When you think of your superiors, what emotions do you feel? You could ask this question of literally any worker in literally any job and they will react exactly this way. Honestly, this Bill Hader black and white flashback should be its own movie. This is the funniest shit in the whole film. As much as I love this movie, it's all downhill from here. That's inappropriate. You're damn right it is. One, who holds it that far away from their mouth? Two, judging by how clenched that fist is, there's no way it has the girth to be viable at that sort of distance. And three, munchies or not, why would anyone eat a hot dog like this? Bury the hatch, sell the land, and dispose of him. Dispose of him? He's stoned as f***. He won't remember sh No reason to disappear this guy. Just drop him off at a nearby bus station and let him make up his own history. It's almost like you guys don't even understand the drug you've been studying underground. Also, why did they study this drug underground? Did they think marijuana was nuclear? Did they have no scientific understanding of dispersion at the time? Changing clothes in your car. I'm dating a high school girl. Admitting this on the radio when you are this guy's age. As long as it's consensual. I think it's consensual. Did you say you f***ing think? The shot alone contains three boxes of tissues. The f is going on in this office and where do I sign up? Stealing. Holy sh is being a slob a fireable offense? What does being a slob even mean in this context? Eating too many pastries? Leaving a mess? Why leave such temptation in plain view? What the hell is this sign and who the f made it? No student would make this sign. This sign is a narc. Time to suck today. Right. That is the worst motivational phrase ever. Followed closely by time to pop today's zip and a penny saved is another penny I can shove up my roommate's ass while they are asleep. You've got what? minus 30 you. seconds to get off school property. You. How is he allowed in the school in the first place? I don't care if she is 18. Dale is clearly a fully grown ass man. He shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a school where he has no children or relatives attending. How did these two even f***ing meet? She's into drama and goes to high school. He's into borderline conspiracy based talk radio and is constantly stoned. They meet at a Youth for Christ concert, a debate club, anger management, VCRs. This <laughs> is like if that blue oyster sh met that Afghan Kush I had. How come they always name weed strains like Pink Floyd songs? Why isn't there a potent ass weed strain called hard work or being honest about stuff? Not sure who printed the label for this bag of weed, but neither the drug boss nor the stoner street level salesman seem likely to have done it. Pineapple Express. Roll doobies, I mean credits. I guess we'll need to add dartboards to lamps and candles as things I overly bitch about, but goddamn, this is a stupid ass place to put a dartboard. And I take it you actually hate those two dogs in that photograph below? Because that is gonna get wrecked after even one serious game of darts for amateurs. This is like the apex of the vortex of joint engineering. What you do is you light all three ends at the same time, and then the smoke converges, creating a trifecta of joint smoking power. A lot to address here. First, it has three lit ends, so he calls it a trifecta, but it's still only two total joints. Second, you can get the same effect by simply lighting and smoking two separate joints at once, without the hassle of figuring out how to stab one joint through the heart with a second joint. Third, stabbing the big joint with the little joint will create pockets of airflow, which will complicate the drag and reduce the amount of weed even being inhaled. Lighting a cross on fire. Oh, I'm a process server, so I have to wear a suit. Negatory! The entire opening montage showed you in a whole plethora of non-suit outfits delivering your summonses. You the opposite of need to wear a suit for work. You got a great job where you don't do anything, you get to smoke weed all day? Simpsons, <laughs> dude. You might think that the time spent on these two means they will return at some point to be antagonists or end up being a hash machina of some sort. You would be wrong. As Dale smokes weed outside the house of the drug lord he's here to process serve, I have to ask, what did Ted Jones do to require being served? He's a savvy drug lord with a cop partner, no? He doesn't miss court dates or ignore warrants like an idiot. He is on top of his shit. The entire movie, he thinks Dale Denton is an assassin, not a process server. He has zero clue there would be anyone trying to serve him papers. This evil cop lady who is in the weed business somehow does not smell Dale's giant joint, leading to the rest of the movie happening. And Dale didn't even put his f***ing giant joint out during that near cop encounter. I'm just saying that everything good that happens to Dale is a f***ing miracle because he is the worst and deserves the worst. Pineapple Express. Okay, let's talk about the movie's plan. First of all, the very day that Saul decides to ask Dale about his job just so happens to be the day that the very next person Dale is serving is not only someone Saul knows, but is the freaking guy who supplies all of his drugs. 
Second, Dale turns up at Ted's house at the perfect time to witness Lucille from Clifford the Big Red Dog do some murdering, something he would have missed had he arrived ten minutes later or earlier. And thirdly, Dale leaves behind the only doobie in the world that could directly lead Ted back to him and Saul. The only way this shit happens is if all this turns out to be a weed-inspired fever dream brought on by this ridiculous cannabis fix. On three! I did it on three. On one, two, three, go. This rips off Lethal Weapon for some time. I never need to see movie characters throwing up. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. No, no, he could find the roach and think, it's Pineapple Express. As bonkers as this sounds, this is literally what happened. But I'm still sitting Dale for thinking that the Vito Corleone of local weed sales somehow knows his product by smell. What is this diorama on the bed here with a teepee and trees and buildings and what is this? The movie never explains it. Wanna hit man? Still lit. The fact that the joint is still lit causes this hitman to take a hit rather than run after the person who lit that joint that is still 30 seconds away from this apartment because joints burn out constantly and one staying lit super long to make this scene happen would be a rather rare thing. I'm having dinner with my wife. She can always tell. Smell it on my sweater. Then I have bad news for you, dude, because she's going to smell the weed your partner is currently smoking on your sweater whether or not you tote. Man, for a movie about weed, this movie doesn't seem to understand weed very much. I'm so disappointed that a jar of pickles is all these stone guys managed to bring out of the woods for us snack. No drinks, no chips, just a jar of pickles. A whole section where they're lost in the woods feels improvised. Even if all this is scripted, it's leaden and unfunny enough to feel poorly ad-libbed. And that's not a good thing. Oh, f what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you running from? Return to me now! Dude, why run in the direction of the thing that Saul is running from? Even if you don't see it, run with him! It is extremely hard to root for these guys. Seth Rogen and James Franco take a break from smoking weed and filming so they can go smoke weed and play in a forest. Hey look, it's like my thumb is my c**k. It looks like your thumb is a thumb, but if we're calling it a c**k, it's one so tiny it's not worth bragging about, so none of this scene makes sense to me. Do you know what today is? This is my cat's birthday today. I take it back. There are many parts of this movie that appear to be improvised on the spot. Poorly. HandyVac is not rated for any other use than vacuuming small, hard-to-reach areas. Any other use of HandyVac is unauthorized and brand cannot be held accountable. I think you're going, no! Mr. Wiggles. This is what happens when a movie tries to write its own college girlfriend sin. Landing face first in the poopy cat pan. Although, dude said his cat died three months ago. So his cat died and he just kept the unclean cat pan in his f***ing kitchen for three more months? I understand holding on to one of the cat's toys, but there shouldn't be a cat pan even still in this house. Ted Jones, he knows you witnessed the murder. He found your roach. No one in this movie is surprised by this, while I will forever be inconsolable about it. They're on the back porch! You can catch them if you hurry! Go, go! Despite receiving this information immediately, and Dale and Saul choosing to argue in the street for a full minute, Matheson and Budlovsky will still somehow not catch them. I had you all over here for dinner! Fish tacos! Further evidence that fish tacos can only lead to bad things. Saul mentioned something about going to the casino. The Asians own the casino, Ted. I need another beer. He's gotta be working for them. Let me tell you how many layers of BS this is. First off, Saul hasn't mentioned anything about the casino in front of Matheson. Second of all, of course the casino that Saul mentioned in an offhand comment just so happens to be the only casino in town and run by the gang Ted is at war with. All of which gives Ted and Carol all the ammo they need to keep pursuing Dale and Saul. Because witnessing a murder is apparently not enough to keep them motivated. Bull I said. Ted, who is running a big enough operation to afford to have cops on the payroll, apparently can't afford security that extends more than 20 meters from his property. Look at all that f***ing corn! They made nine or ten years of corn for a dinner for four! He's late for dinner with her parents, so naturally he just barges into the house without knocking or ringing the doorbell like he's goddamn Skippy Handelman. Also, six lamps in this shot, four more in this shot. Does this dinner really require a ten-lamp salute? There's a good chance they went to my apartment where Angie has a lot of things, her yearbooks, report cards- Wait, what? 18 year old is leaving their yearbooks and report cards at their 25 year old boyfriend's place. Well, unless they're deliberately leaving a trail to be followed by one of the luckiest drug dealers in the country. We can't call the police. The police oh. were the murderers. Assuming one cop equals the entire police force. What the f is this shirt? Yeah. Oh, Get ah. Henry Starling misses both Dale and Saul, despite being at point blank range. Also, he either jumped to casual attempted murder very quickly or isn't actually aiming for them and is willingly destroying his own kitchen to make a point. You assholes do exactly what I say or I will take you outside and f*** you in the street! Hmm, what an oddly specific flex. This is the power dynamic reverse version of just tell me who you want me to f***. Hey, fool still warm. For the second time, this guy will note that something warm remains in the home of the people they are chasing, and instead of running out the door after the definitely still nearby targets, he just touches the hot thing casually and a little sexually. Go to the Days Inn downtown, okay? Use a fake name. F off, loser. He says f off, loser, but still takes every single word of Dale's advice instead of driving as far away as his car will take them. They say, like, 
Don't dip the pen in company ink. That's really more of a corporate saying, so that no one ends up in a sexual harassment situation. As a weed seller, you are basically a sole proprietor. And Dale isn't your employee, but rather your customer. So you'd have to be dipping your pen in the ink of a single customer your business served. And at that point, just not sure the analogy holds up. Selling drugs to kids. Also, Seth Rogen and James Franco take a break from smoking weed and filming so they can smoke weed and play with kids. I just saw three students walking from back here with their eyes as red as the devil's d Is the devil's d particularly redder than the rest of his anatomy, or is she just being an alliteration nerd? The latter is fine, but there's way more fun options like Satan's Sausage, Beelzebub's Balls, Lucifer's Labia, Mephistopheles' Memories, Moloch's Masseter. Oh. You got to be the dumbest mother. Oh my God. He's dumb, but he's by no means the dumbest. I just read about a guy that robbed a bank while pretending to interview for a job, but left his actual home address on the application form. Don't believe me? Google that shit right now. You saw Ted Jones and a police officer shoot somebody. It was a policewoman. It was a woman. Oh, I think I know who that bitch was. You got it based on that? Is Carol just advertising that she hangs out with Ted in her off hours? Man, this arrest 180 in Dale's favor in a hurry. We cut away, she's throwing him in the car, and when we cut back, she's already bought his entire story, which, if we're being honest, is probably one of the most unbelievable stories anyone has ever told a cop. Kick out the window, isn't that what they do? Oh, no! <laughs> this will never not be hilarious. I can't see! He says he can't see, which makes me wonder why he's choosing to ignore this conveniently eye-level piece of clear windshield that the stunt driver is... Oh. Stunt driver. Also, the fact that nobody at all dies in this entire car chase is a minor miracle. As soon as we kill those sacks of shit tonight, Ted. Moving on. How is she even here right now? After that chase and her gun discharge hitting someone and her car flipping wreck, she would have hours, if not days, of explaining to do down at the station. She's not here right now. That is a lie. I never thought Rosie Perez would lie to me. Again. I use a bong. It filters out the addictive shit. <laughs> what? But you didn't save me. She was going to help us and you made things worse. To be fair, at no point did you tell him that was the case. Screaming. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. What are you doing? With no indication as to why is not very f***ing helpful. I'm going to be designing buildings and what's he going to be doing? Clearly just said. I'm going to design septic tanks for playgrounds. Monkey's out of the bottle, man. Yep. The root is out of the boot. The kitty cat got into the beans. The clam is eating the taco. Okay, I'll stop. Doing this. Where are her parents? Did they get a separate room? Did they go out to Shoney's? Why do we only see her in these scenes? I love you. I love you. I want to marry you. Oh, I made a mistake. This is legitimately the funniest scene in the entire movie and I'll take another sin off for it. You know what? I lost my virginity when I was 14 years old. I really didn't need any more reason to be disturbed about this storyline, but here we are. Slapping a movie reference on the name of a retirement home. Yeah, my other grandma's over in the Turner and Hooch house for elderlies, while my great aunt Arlene is comfy and happy at the Romy and Michelle's restful rooms. You told me you wanted to sit down and play belong. dominoes with me. Lying about wanting to play dominoes. Also, and much more importantly, how is this interaction happening without one or more of the employees of this facility interceding? Don't you usually have to sign in or check in at places like this these days? They kidnapped my grandson. The coincidences continue as Dale now turns up at the perfect time to hear Saul's grandma mother explain exactly who kidnapped Saul. Is punching in the balls a foul? Yes, usually. But after said balls owner smashed up your face with a coffee pot? I'm gonna call that one even. Matheson's face was clearly bleeding after the coffee pot incident, yet there is no sign of it here, which is at most a few hours later. In fact, how have the burns scarred already? This man should be in a hospital, or dead, or dead and in a hospital. Regardless, he shouldn't be here. I'm gonna need whatever brand of weed Red is smoking because what he has achieved here with two bullet wounds is phenomenal. Somehow he's managed to free himself from his duct tape prison, drag his ass to the kitchen to make some f***ing noodles, retrieve the cat cake from the counter, take both those items and his stereo to the f***ing bathroom, and find a f***ing neck brace for an injury that we didn't even see happen. Think about a hermit crab, okay, and it's a shell, and it's like they go from one shell to the next. And that's what I am. I see, we're back to ad-libbing. You know, if they'd come out and said much of this movie was improvised on the spot, I think they would gain respect for this film. If you're an asshole, you're gonna come back as a cockroach, or a worm, or a fucking anal bead, okay? Anal beads aren't sentient animals and therefore probably not on the reincarnation hierarchy, right? Use the pain, you'll have a second win. That's not how bullet wounds work. So he decides to help Dale, and then when they get to the farm, he bails, only to save the day at the end in surprise fashion. Why not have him say no to Dale here, but have him offer a map to the farm and some guns? And then he comes in at the end to save the day. Why not that? You're the best guy I know. Knowing this few guys. The scuba suit from the opening scene is the single best callback to that scene in this entire finale. 
Yeah, I can't feel you. Oh, wait, I feel it. I feel it a bit. Yes, okay. No one will be seated as the movie devotes an offensive amount of time to this Seth Rogen doing something vaguely homosexual to James Franco bit. If their entrance is going to be this obvious and aggressive, I have to wonder why they bothered going to the effort of getting kitted out in all the stealth gear. The result was literally this one dead guy and f all else for their trouble. I really have no idea how that would work, or if it's even a bad thing. Everyone in the opening of this shootout scene shoots like a stormtrooper or is firing blanks. This is the second gun-based gear-up scene in the last 10 minutes. Dale and Saul have gone from saying, I think we're gonna have to kill him because I don't think I'm capable of murder, to not only being capable, but quite proficient at lots of murder. Call me naive, but I always thought you were supposed to smoke weed, not shoot it up. Watch my back. I'll go down and take care of this. I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. Hey, Dad! Giving the person you want to kill plenty of warning that you want to kill them instead of just killing them. This very same member of the evil Asian gang literally just stabbed a dude from behind and killed him. Why is he now doing WWF moves on Dale? Doing this? Jesus f***ing Christ, Dale. You aren't even stoned right now. This movie has a lot of nut shots. There's remember the kind of movies we loved in middle school, and then there's remember middle school? F*** the police! Saul spontaneously forgets how gun recoil works, despite having no issue in the previous scene. All so that Carol can survive long enough to be killed by a car later. Cool! I mean, Jesus! Screaming instead of ducking. I mean, screaming and ducking could have also worked. Actually, even screaming then ducking has a chance. Look, basically anything other than just screaming at the car that's hurtling toward you is a good idea. Rob Rom Max Machina! Rob Rom. Rob Rom. You kill my brother! So if the plan here was to crash in and blow them all up with the suitcase bomb as payback, why the f*** do they need to go through all of the gunfighting and ensuing casualties? Why not blow them up as soon as he sees them congregated up in the barn? They may even been able to get away with all this weed! Hi! Am uh, I on the air? You are. You're about to get deed <laughs> by the deal. A D in the face. Doing this sh instead of seeking immediate medical attention. No diner would serve these three without also calling the cops. He uh, threw the ashtray in his face. I was you like, hit me, man. Up. Except he hit you on the other side of the head. See? I was almost tempted to let it pass and put it down to the memory loss brought about by the excessive weed inhalation from the burning barn, but then I remembered Danny McBride was an alien covenant. Am I like seeing because I'm stoned or because I like have no blood left? Yes. The answer is yes. I can't believe I'm about to do this, but if ever there was a movie screaming for an end credit scene, it's this one. And it should have been super old Bill Hader, hair long, white beard, having been locked in this facility for a couple decades, perfecting his various strains of weed that he's growing, taking a hit and saying, Ah, <laughs> I'm calling this one the bee's knees. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. I won't be back for the match. Yeah. Hey, dude, hey, how's it going? Hey. Hit the kayak of the bucket. Do you think you could pull the plug on someone if you needed to? Oh. Whoa! Prognosis negative. What do you mean the batteries? How can I explain this to you differently? It has ceased to be. It's expired and gone to see its makeup. It's rung down the curtain and joined the quiet invisible. And your mother seems to prefer that I go through life like a f***ing prisoner while she keeps my d*** in a mason jar under the sink. Have you ever fired your gun up in the air and gone, ah? No, I have not ever fired my gun up in the air and gone, ah. Be taller! Be stronger! I cannot lift this. Grow stronger! <laughs> mop, mop! Move! Watch out! Move! Watch out! Oh.